Up next um, is a company in many ways that doesn't need any introduction. Um, I think we've all he uh, heard of Yelp. We've probably all used it. It's wonderful and awesome. It was founded back in 2004 in San Francisco and now available practically everywhere around the world. Um, Rather than me talk any more about it, why don't we bring out Loic and founder and CEO of Yelp, Jeremy Stoffelman, for a conversation. Please welcome them on the stage. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. You Thanks. want to hear? Yes, please. Okay. It's going to be cozy. How about oh, that? nice. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, thanks for coming for the web. It's My been pleasure. a while well, we wanted to do this together, right? Many years. What has it been? Three years since we first talked about yep, this. Yeah, exactly. So when did you start Yelp again? Uh, the very beginning was summer of 2004. Uh, I, have, I actually was in business school. So I, prior to that, I was doing PayPal. I was an early PayPal person, engineering manager, VP of engineering there. Went off to business school after eBay bought us and then came back for the summer and uh, I was doing an internship uh, with my old boss, Max Levchin, who I, I think you know. Good friend, who just Good launched friend. this uh, fertility app. Yes, <laughs> I, I read about that. He that wants everybody pregnant. That's, that's a good mission, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I was just spending that summer with Max, and uh, we were trying to come up with what was going to be the, the new exciting thing on the consumer web. Because uh, you know, it was pretty dead, if you, if you remember that time. No one was really investing in the internet. There were very few startups that, that were born in like the 2002, 2003 timeframe. So 2004 was just the very beginning of that resurgence, sort of like the, the green shoots moment. Yeah, and you went through a, a crisis, 2007, yeah. 2008. That was a really tough time, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that was another difficult period. But I mean, Yelp actually in that moment uh, did quite, quite well considering. Um, and I think part of that, uh, is simply because we cater to all sorts of local businesses. It's just so highly diversified um, that when you know, the bottom dropped out in 2008, uh, some businesses were affected, but then others were doing better. You know, car repair was probably doing better at that time because everyone's getting their cars fixed instead of uh, buying new ones. Hmm. Yeah. And so you, your public company, when did you go public? Uh, we went public last year, um, so it's been a year. Very uh, successful, right? Yeah. 1.8 billion? That's what, uh, that's what the, it changes every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, we came out at something in the 900 million-ish uh, range, and so we, we've about oh, doubled. So you doubled. Um, which has been You uh, think people good. should still buy? <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> the SEC would probably uh, enjoy that Not if I like did. That but uh, I don't want to give them any ammo, so I'm going to stay it's okay, silent. It's OK. No one is watching. <laughs> uh, but congratulations. That's Thank very you. impressive. So can you, can you share a little like, lessons before we talk in, about the model and where you're going? Like, uh, it's an amazing entrepreneurial story that took yeah, eight, nine years. Yeah. 10 is next year? The 10 years of Yelp? Be, yeah, next year. So I'm, I'm headed into my ninth year, I think, this summer. And so what a few stories you can share with entrepreneurs and you know, startup uh, yeah. guys here. How, how, how can we also do the same and take, take it public? It took, <laughs> took some time, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a long, windy road. Um, you know, I think the most difficult part is, is always the beginning. Um, so in that period back in 2004, we came up with the idea for Yelp, and we thought, you know, the real challenge in local is this local information is in all of our heads, but how do we get out? How do we make it searchable? How do we bring it to the web? And uh, my co-founder and I thought that the way that would happen is you build a service around questions and answers. Like, I would ask you, hey, do you know a good doctor in San Francisco? And you would answer the question. So it wasn't a review. review. It had a review component. Like, your answer would be a review, yeah. but I had to ask you the question. And buried in, really as an afterthought, was a way for you to write your own review without being asked a question. And I remember the, the moment very specifically where my co-founder, you know, who's doing the, the coding at the time, was like, should we have this feature? Should you be able to write a review without being asked anything? And you know, I was adamant that no, you know, no one would ever write a review for fun, so it wasn't important. But I'm like, you know, bury it in there somewhere. And uh, by luck, you know, it, we left that feature in there. And when we launched the site, it really didn't work as expected. Like that was sort of the oh shit moment. <laughs> um, and that became the center, basically. 
Well, as I was looking at the data, how are people using the site? You know, I was trying to figure out, you know, of course, the initial, the early data was saying this, this thing isn't working. And so then I began, you know, sort of looking around saying, well, you know, is there anything here? Are there any clues of, of what might work? Uh, you know, what's the, what's the next pivot? Because the, this first attempt doesn't seem to be hitting it out of the park. And in the data, you could see that certain users would get addicted to reviewing. They would write 5, 10, 15 reviews in, in one sitting. And so that was the, oh, OK, maybe there's something we missed here. Maybe, maybe it's actually fun to write reviews. Maybe if we built a service around sharing your favorite places, like, you know, writing about your favorite local businesses, that actually could work. And I actually sat down and, and started writing some of those reviews. In, and fortunately, it appealed to me. I got excited. I'm like, oh. I, I, I'm opinionated. And then you can I share like it to <laughs> your friends with a profile with all your recommendations about, say, London and so on. Yeah, so, uh, you know, at the time, it was marrying a couple concepts that existed sort of in different places. On Amazon, you had consumer reviews of products, but you didn't have a sense of social media profile. Who are you? What are the other reviews you've written? Um, there and was it, no Facebook and no Twitter, right? It, they were just starting. So yeah. you had, you know, Friendster, and then MySpace was really getting going at the time. So we married some of these concepts, the concept of a profile with reviewing. It looked a lot like a blog. We were, we were taking all these different concepts, bringing them together to create a product that was a, a useful platform for you to share your recommendations. And, and then you had uh, all the uh, competition starting to, to happen, right? You, there, yeah. there are a lot of review sites. Um, how do you, and so can we talk about competition today actually? Because if, if I think about you, I could, if I Google for a place, uh, say a French restaurant in London, yeah. I'll get results uh, on Zagat, right? Because Marisa acquired Zagat before leaving Google and joining. So how do you, and you get the Yelp reviews as well on the Google search, hopefully, right? Hopefully they So you compete there. with Google. Yeah. They, they went straight head to head. Then I guess Marisa will do something there. Do they have reviews on Yahoo? I don't know what the state is. Uh, Yahoo originally did have a, a review product, but I, I don't remember exactly what their, their setup is. Are you days, selling to Marisa? I can't comment on M&A activity, certainly not in this audience. I we can talk afterwards. <laughs> she buys, uh, <laughs> you know, she, she does She's been very nice inquisitive checks. lately. Yeah, but we're, we're doing fantastic. I yeah. mean, the business has been really on fire since we, I mean, pretty much since it got going. But with the IPO, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're obviously making it clear that, that we're an independent company. We're not really looking around for, for that kind of thing. So tell me about competition. How do you see it and where, where are you taking it? Because if you, I guess that's kind of the same question. You also launch. You still have check-ins. We do. Yeah. So Foursquare has check-ins. Facebook mm -hmm. has Facebook Places. Yelp mm -hmm. has check. Let's talk about this for a second. <laughs> yeah, if I go to that place in London that uh -huh. I like, uh -huh. uh, I can check in on Foursquare. I can check in on Yelp. I can check in on Facebook. I can, I can post on Google Plus checking in as well. Mm -hmm. so how do you see that going? Is that all? irrelevant or? Yeah, I mean, I think we all see that, that checking in is sort of a commodity. It's not that important. It's, it's a piece of data. It, it's something like I'd learn a little bit about you when you say I was here, but I don't learn that much. And so what we found is we, we like collecting that. That's why we offer check-ins. And it works great. We get lots of check-ins from our users. And so that can help us with things like you know, perfecting the geocode. And it can tell us a little bit about your preferences. But the real valuable data is when you sit down and you write something very detailed about that local business. Because how else am I going to know that you were a cafe de ami and, uh, you know, and you had a bad experience and, uh, and you know, they, they weren't very nice to you? Like yeah, I'm going to find out all that color when you write your review. Jeremy, uh, uh, he's uh, <laughs> making a French, re French restaurant in San Francisco called Café des Amis, and I gave it a one star on Yelp <laughs> <laughs> because it was uh, terrible. An unpleasant experience. Yeah, and I if you read my review, the guy says, uh, which is fascinating, I'm sure, for you guys. <laughs> the guy says, Don't, he told me never come again. French well, restaurant. Yeah, so I, you know, I gave him a good maybe review. Maybe you weren't very friendly when you went in there. I don't know. I uh -huh. was cool, actually. It, uh, <laughs> it was, I find it very liberating to put that Yelp one star. Yes, I, I've had that experience, and, and you know that's that's part of the power of Yelp is you know for good or bad, when, you know you get to share with the world what your experience was, and so you know I've had both sides of that. I've found really off the beaten path, hidden you know gems, and I've been able to go on Yelp and tell the world about it, and they've been able to get additional customers because of my viewpoint. Or in the case where something goes wrong, I feel validated that even if I was mistreated by a business owner, I have a place where I can tell other people and warn them about that experience. So competition, Jeremy. Mm -hmm. How do you see it? 
competition? Well, you know, we're very focused on just one thing, which I think has been really helpful. Uh, when you look at some of the big players out there, Facebook, Google, they've got a lot on their plate. You know, yep. they're working on a lot of different problems. And, you know, that's, that's a huge advantage for us is Yelp stands for really one thing, and that's connecting people with great local businesses. And so we've been competing with big players like Google uh, pretty much since the beginning. I mean, we started in 2004. By 2006, it was very clear that Google was gunning for the space. And here they are still, you know, every year trying to reinvent their local effort. Did they to make keep Zagat up. free? Did they get it for they free? Made, no, they, I know <laughs> that. <laughs> I know they paid for it. But did they, did they make it free? Do they compete with you free? Uh, they, they bought, it was paid they bought the content, and they do have it, they I believe, release. now for free. I see. But it ages over time, so the content that they revealed um, you know, maybe is a little bit stale now. I, I know that they have like a paid reviewing effort where they're in malls, and they're trying to collect content that way. So you're saying it's crap, basically? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just trying to make sure. <laughs> so that's why Yelp is better. Is you have fresher content? Well, the unique thing about Yelp is that we have real, living, breathing communities of people, like people that are passionate just about finding local businesses and talking about them. And so in every one of our now in more than 100 markets, we actually have a person or multiple people, in some cases, on the ground organizing that community. So we have these Yelp events. Everyone gets together. They swap tips. They go back on the site. They okay, talk about all the events, too. I yeah, saw that. And so this is, you know, that's part of the, the value of focus. That, you know, we really understand how to build these communities. And I think, frankly, that's been one of Google's weaknesses, is understanding how to connect people. I don't really get the controversy you had at one point, which is kind of old, but with uh, fake reviews and so on. That's kind of... I mean, sorted out, right? It, but you had the, a big issue to solve at one point, or not? I mean, for, uh, fake reviews is, is a constant battle. Um, it's something that we faced from literally day one. I mean, within a couple of weeks of launching this site, we saw our first fake reviews. And so my co-founder and I knew immediately that, that we were going to have to solve this. And so we set about finding an algorithmic solution, much like Google. Uh, and it, we call it the review filter. And, uh, and what it does is it looks at patterns of behavior on the site and tries to decide yeah. as accurately as possible which reviews you know, really can be relied on by, the, the, you know, by consumers in the community and which we're unsure about and we should set aside. And so on every business page at the bottom, there's a little link that says how many reviews have been filtered. And you can go follow that link and see what we've taken off that page. And so that, you know, I think that's been one of our, frankly, keys to success is that consumers, on average, can rely on the content they see on so Yelp. So if I'm a restaurant owner reason. and I review myself, I ask my friends to review it, you're going to see it somehow. We're going to do our best to identify those strange patterns and pull that content down. And so it does, you know, it's, it's a new thing. Um, and it's caught businesses off guard because, you know, frankly, the world prior to that, uh, you know, sites like City Search and so, so forth, really didn't spend a lot of time trying to protect against that. And so businesses got into the habit of just, hey, if I want to be a good, you know, if I want to be five stars, I just need to get enough friends to review me or I need to write enough fake reviews. And, uh, and we've made sure that Yelp, you, you can't do that. It's not going to work. And you have, uh, so how do you, what's your business model? Uh, what's your revenue, by the way, since you're a public company? Uh, we're, we've said, you know, guidance this year is between 216, 218 million nice. in revenue. Yeah. And so how do you, so you charge the businesses? We do for advertising. So oh, we're, so we're the, calling you, you local businesses. We have a large sales force. Um, you know, hundreds of people, multiple offices, uh, you know, now internationally too. And we're calling on local businesses, offering them advertising packages. But how does it look like? It's, uh, it's not for a review, obviously. No, so obviously. Feature. <laughs> it, you know, it's similar to what you experience on Google when you search for a website, they show a sponsored result at the top. Similarly, if you search for, uh, you know, falafel, then you're going to find other, you know, there's going to be the organic results. And then at the top, there's a called out. And can a, can, a, can a place which has a one star buy advertising? Because then that won't do them many good, right? It's kind of, you, you have, it must be tough for you. Because you have on one side, I, if I put myself in your shoes for a second, you have on one side, your, the interest of your users is to really have the best reviews possible and the most, you know, independent. And then the interest of your revenue is to actually sell also to the one-star crappy places. No, fortunately, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, you know, because if you think about it, if it's a one-star crappy place, it's probably not going to be in business that long. And there shouldn't be that many businesses out there that are one-star crappy places. So as it turns out, the vast majority of businesses have reasonably good reputations. Um, and so those are the ones we're primarily focused on. We don't have a hard and firm restriction that you can't buy ads from us based on, on your star rating. But as you can imagine, the businesses that want to sign up for advertising probably have better 
yes. reputations on Yelp. And 200 and 250 million dollars, you said, in the 200 range for revenue. Revenue. 216 to 218. 260. 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 yeah. thank you. Uh, how does it compare to the uh, yellow page guys? Because you're going head to head. I mean, you could even argue, don't take it bad, but like, is it not, is it reinventing yellow pages or is it kind of a new yellow page business that you've started? I think it's, it's disrupting the yellow pages. So the, the yellow pages world was one of completely pay to play. So if you had a local business and you really wanted to be seen, you had to just pay an enormous yeah. amount of money and that was it. Uh, Yelp turns that on its head and it actually puts consumers first. And so in our world now, if you're a great local business, you actually get some exposure for free because your reviews speak for themselves. That's going to get you, uh, you know, some additional eyeballs that's going to turn into some customers. If you want to go beyond that and actually you know, get some additional traffic, that's where the advertising model comes in. And I can review not only, I'm talking about restaurants because mm -hmm. I'm just a little um, I, like food. You like, yeah. I like food. I French. like food too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, so, but you can, you can review a lot of different things on Yelp. Yes, it, it goes far beyond the restaurant category. In fact, I think the number one category these days is shopping. So boutiques, oh, places to buy different things, yeah. Um, and, so and so it covers the full range. It, it actually, you know, the Yellow Pages traditionally didn't cover things like shopping uh, and didn't really cover things like restaurants. Uh, but Yelp obviously covers those pretty well, but it goes into the traditional Yellow Pages categories um, too, like you know doctors and hair salons and um, well, you can you rate know, doctors, plumbers. Huh? Yeah, yeah, hmm. you can re review your doctor. Is that legal everywhere? Uh, I bet in France it's not legal to rate a doctor. We'll have to look into that. You can I would be surprised. Anyway, let me know. Uh, it's a, it's <laughs> yeah marginal. I, guess. <laughs> I will let you know. Yes, <laughs> review um, your doctor. See what happens. <laughs> yes, sharing economy, uh, Jeremy. You obviously you are in it. In the sharing reviews is sharing, but is it? Yeah. So are you are you doing more when you see Airbnb going through the roof and Etsy this morning was sharing? Chad was sharing with us. Uh, you know, basically you, it would be pretty easy for you. Pretty easy. The next step could be that you start selling products for your like you're saying boutiques mm -hmm. are getting mm -hmm. reviewed. You could also put them online. You could go. Yeah, sure. Right, the yellow pages actually do that too. They even build websites for them, right? Mm -hmm. So where are you taking it? I mean, I think that is a, an interesting direction, and, and it's one we've got a toe in the water, but but I see a lot of potential. Um, and that is, we have all these people that are essentially shopping online for something offline, and so why not offer those consumers a way to close the transaction? Yeah, uh, we already do that with open table, top tables, so you can book your reservation from your iPhone or your but Android device. But the open table is independent to you. You just have a deal with them. Right. We have a way where... If Why you don't you buy them? They're a very expensive company. <laughs> Why don't you... They're very, quite successful. Too, Why don't you build your own? Uh, I mean, this is, this is an area that we're interested in. So you can see that Yelp is... Uh, oh, you're going to build an open table-like service? Well, we're not going to get into future product launches here. We have an open... It actually already exists on the site. So it, it's I fantastic. See. It's seamless. Um, and I think that's really the way to think about it, is Yelp as a platform. So you are aggregating all these consumers, they're doing their shopping today, and the problem is they're just not closing their transaction. And so you can imagine you might be able to plug in yeah. services like OpenTable for all sorts of verticals, and that could be a really interesting business And you us. review hotels, I guess, too? Yes. So absolutely. same, you could go into the Airbnb space, reviewing my flat for rent. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't anticipate going, going to that level. I mean, there was also uh, <laughs> the guys from Dog Vacay, I know, reached out, and they have all these different people that, uh, have you heard of Dog Vacay? Um, it's like a place to host your dog, so all these individuals. It's very similar to Airbnb, except for your dog. <laughs> okay. And so they were, they were contacting us about wanting to have their different uh, hosts, the people that take care of the dogs, on Yelp and reviewed. And, and it, at that level of detail, I think the data gets too messy. We'd leave that up to the experts like Airbnb and, and Dog Vacay. I'm going to take a few questions uh, for Jeremy, but uh, so, so if you have questions, please, uh, sure. please uh, uh, sh show me. Any questions now? Or should I, should I ask another one? Well, let, let them Brave think for, for a while. So can you explain a little bit where you're going now? So, so you've, you've talked about the last nine years. Yes. What's the next uh, 10 years? I mean, clearly the, the focus is on mobile still. Um, so there's a lot of iteration. We have a number of launches coming up. I'm not going to give you any of the product details today. Uh, but we have, we have some good things in the works uh, that you'll be seeing in the next uh, weeks and months to come. Uh, international expansion is top of mind. So we bought Quipe yep. uh, late last year. We're in the process of doing this integration. You we, bought them because them. you could not kill them? No, it was just opportunistic. Uh, so you, the Quipe opportunity was, presented was itself. your we clone shopping. in Europe? 
It was a Yelp-like okay. site in Europe, yeah. You could, you could say a clone. I don't mind. And you're still right. integrating. I checked yesterday since I was seeing you, and you, yeah. you still need to create your profile on both. Um, we're merging. We're in the process. So right now, um, we took Ireland, and Quipe Ireland is now is now Yelp. So there's, oh, I see. if you go to any of your Same. old Quipe links, then you're on. And Yelp. You're, so you're killing the brand. We're yeah. We're Yelp. The content from Quipe will be brought over to Yelp, and then Yelp will be. Isn't that going for sad? It. You think for Europe that you know entrepreneurs build. Not, not only, of course, like there is SoundCloud and there is Spotify, and sure. so there are amazing startups coming from Europe, right? But in, in that case, there are also clones that get acquired, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the brand. And I mean, of course, there's the question of like, if you clone something, what are you hoping for <laughs> to have happen? Well, so maybe a it's a dream come true. Uh, but, <laughs> but I mean, it, they, they did build up a. a yeah, I heard some <laughs> entrepreneurs in Germany also specialize right. in. I've that. heard of those guys. Yeah. Um, but you know, they, they did create some value. They, it's, it's got north of 15 million eeks and a few million reviews, and so that's nothing to shake a stick at. Uh, and, uh, and so it was an attractive asset for us. So, so we were happy to yeah. pick it up. Yeah. Question? For Jeremy, yeah, here. Got a microphone right there. Can you introduce yourself, please? Oh, sure. Um, yeah, Chris Tuttle, Soundview Technology Group. Um, this whole user review type of thing, you guys have done very well. You, you know, you do restaurants, a lot of things that are sort of retail, leisure. Then you have Angie's List over here doing like renovations, landscaping, plumbers, um, and then maybe they don't exist yet in size, but medical and, and you know, Luik mentioned doctors and things like that mm -hmm. may be separate. Do those things have to exist separately? Is there a case for that or is that, or do you look at the world and say that should all be on Yelp or there should be one place for consumers to go across the board or it's domain specific enough that we're just going to leave it alone? Um, I mean, I see it as both, I guess. Uh, certainly that stuff does live on Yelp. Um, so if you look at older markets for us, you'll find reviews of doctors, dentists, uh, all, all of the different verticals that you mentioned. There are also going to be vertical sites um, that have their own content. For instance, OpenTable has some review content. Um, so maybe you, know, you, you start at Yelp because it's kind of a one-stop sh one shop. It's similar to Amazon, how it goes very broad, but yet there's still interesting verticals um, that continue to exist. Like an example would be for diamonds, there's Blue Nile. You can buy diamonds on Amazon or you can go to the specialist. And so I think realistically the ecosystem over time is going to look like that where you will find better and better content on Yelp in some of these deep long tail categories, but you still will have the option of going to a vertical site. Another question? For Jeremy? No? Well, I have more questions. You have a question? Coming Since you had front? your headset on, <laughs> I thought you were walking for the web somehow. <laughs> you, are, uh, you are recording this as well. Uh, you, you have yes. an impressive setup. You, you need, you, Thank you. You need you. my Google <laughs> Glass? or <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, Euro Maestro. I just had a question. If you thought about integrating the reservations more directly, where you would do reservations with the restaurants as well, rather than working with someone else, like building it. Um, I mean, we've actually got this great partnership with OpenTable. It's been in place for years, and uh, it's seamless. So, you know, from a product standpoint, I can't really think of a reason why, why I would need to do anything differently. Like, you don't have to leave uh, the app to, to make a, a reservation on OpenTable. OpenTable really is, is quite dominant in the U.S., and so I just see it as a successful partnership. Any other question for Jeremy? Yeah, right here. Uh, Leif Pelican from W and V Magazine, Germany. Uh, I was wondering, um, Europe, um, the publishing companies, especially Springer, are buying um, classifieds, um, well, all over Europe. And I was wondering if uh, you were partnering, actually, or, or thinking about partnering with publishing companies who are doing classified. Um, for classifieds, we haven't really focused on that. Um, you know, we see our mission as connecting people with great local businesses, and so we've tried to stay, uh, you know, pretty focused on just that that one thing. It's certainly come up; it's been suggested here and there, and I, you know, maybe it's possible one day we'll we'll think about it. But it's it's not something on the plate right now. Well, so if you don't do that, what's the business development you're doing? Like, what what are the key deals you're doing? Um, we've actually done a number of, of really exciting deals. Obviously, the sort of the main one is our Apple deal. So you can find us integrated into Apple Maps. 
Um, so all nice. the reviews uh, the, in Europe as well as uh, certainly in the States come from Yelp, which is pretty cool. And then in luxury cars, just about every luxury car brand now uh, has integrated Yelp into their in-dash for local business information. Hmm. So I didn't get, uh, maybe I was, it's me jet lagged or something like, but what was the next product you were about to launch? <laughs> I don't think I was planning on telling you. Oh. Check back. So no hints. Give me, give me a couple weeks. No hints on the future. Weeks. Well, you're a public company, so I know it's tricky uh, for you. It is. Anything you, you'd like to you know, share with the audience, the entrepreneurs here? Um, you know, the, the one tip I, I always like to give uh, that was given to me many years um, by another well-known entrepreneur was make sure you choose, you know, when, you, when you're trying to decide whether or not an idea is good enough to pursue or, or a particular business is something you want to you go forward with, make sure that it's the type of business that when you're standing in the shower, it's the thing you want to think about for the next 10 or 20 years. Uh, because literally, if you're like me, you will find yourself sitting on a stage nine years later still thinking about that business. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I agree. So you better love it, is, is the point. Can yeah. the startups here listening to, to you partner with Yelp? Do you have an API? Do you, how do you do We do, it? yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Um, I think it's yelp.com slash developers. And uh, we do have a Yelp API. There's lots of good data. Uh, we've actually, I think, recently revamped it, uh, added some things. And, uh, and there's also, if you go to the contact form, you can reach out to our business development group. We have partnerships all over the place, so we're used to working with folks large and small. So I'd encourage folks that are interested in our data to check it out. Excellent. Well, you'll be around. People can keep asking you questions and on Twitter, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Jeremy, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.